and running for a seat in the National Assembly is the heir to the country's main political dynasty. My guest is Bilalwal Bhutto Zardari, son of Benazir Bhutto, twice Prime Minister of Pakistan, who was assassinated in 2007. He's chairman of the Pakistan People's Party, founded by his grandfather 50 years ago. The PPP has seen its popularity plummet in recent years. Can Bilalwal Bhutto Zardari restore its fortunes and turn around a political legacy tarnished by allegations of corruption, patronage and incompetence. Bilalwal Bhutto Zardari, welcome to Hard Talk. Thanks for having me, Zainab. Your grandfather was executed, your mother assassinated, you've received death threats. Why put yourself on the front line of politics like this? Yeah, thank you very much, Zainab. You know, three days after my mother's assassination in December of 2007, the party Central Executive Committee uh, decided that I was to be the co-chairman of the Pakistan People's Party. Uh, Along at, with your father, at that Asif Ali Zardari. Yes. Yeah. Uh, at that time, the country was in chaos. From Karachi to Kashmir, the people were rioting, the country was burning. Uh, and the party um, asked, and I, it wasn't exactly something that I could turn down. I stepped up and did what I have to do. My mother often said that she didn't choose this life, it chose her. And I believe uh, the same applies to me. I'm committed uh, to trying to complete my mother's incomplete mission for a peaceful, prosperous and democratic Pakistan. Your mother was in self-imposed exile before she went back to uh, Pakistan in 2007. I saw her a couple of months before she was um, assassinated and I asked her, why go back to Pakistan when you've received these death threats? And she said to me, you know, Zainab, I feel that it is my duty, as you just said, to go back. She was very fatalistic about what might happen to her. Did she ever discuss the possibility that she might die with you and your two younger sisters? I mean, obviously, that's a very difficult conversation to have with anyone. I think everyone was aware of the risks. Uh, she would often say that um, you don't get to choose when you die. Uh, and we have faith, uh, particularly from our religion, that it's written down. And she would often joke that I could die walking across the street in London as well. I think she believed in the cause that she was fighting for, for a democratic Pakistan, and she was warning our nation of the threats of extremism and terrorism. And at a time when all of Pakistan's politicians weren't speaking up, my mother uh, spoke up, and she was a beacon of hope. Uh, for the people of Pakistan. But nevertheless, she was your mother, as well as this iconic political figure for many people. Did you feel any anger and resentment about no. what she did and the fact that you and your sisters ended up losing your mother? No, absolutely. I was uh, completely and utterly devastated. Um, and even though I come from a family, my grandfather uh, was assassinated, both my uncles were assassinated as a political party, our workers, various political leaders have been assassinated for the cause that they fight for. Uh, it was something that completely broke us. Uh, but rather than pursue a politics of hate and revenge, my mother has raised me differently. Uh, so as I said, three days after my mother's assassination, I, um, I was elected chairman, and instead of calling for revenge, instead of paying off the anger um, of the people of Pakistan, the supporters of the Pakistan People's Party. I said that democracy is the best revenge and try to convert our grief uh, into a cause. And we're working towards that sort of greater aim. But it was a great shock. There you were living in Dubai. You were brought up mostly in Actually, Dubai. The, yeah. Then went to I was at university. I was, a freshman, university. At, I was yeah. a freshman at Oxford University. I just completed my uh, freshers first term uh, when this um, Devastating but news. how did you learn about her, her death? Uh, we were in actually uh, in Dubai at the time. Yeah. Uh, my mother had recently had a conversation uh, with my father and uh, myself that um, uh, my father had been in Dubai with us, and they decided to split the risks, and he would 
uh, stay abroad and she would take the political risk. But the, given the increasing risk, we're taking a decision that he too was to come back. And we were literally having that conversation uh, when the news uh, appeared. What was on the your last conversation with your mother? <sighs> Actually, I'd, um, she, I, I discussed with her um, her voice. She'd been campaigning all across the country, and she's a very charismatic speaker. She spoke from the heart, and uh, obviously, after a really long campaign, actually, her voice uh, had um, had gone away. Uh, it was uh, sort of raspy and things. I'd said, okay, you have to have um, lemon and honey in your tea. And she was like, yeah, okay, I'll do that. Mm. That was the last conversation we had. So you want to see justice over her death because up until now, the only people who've been punished over her death are two policemen who um, were found guilty of cleaning the area where she'd been killed in Rawalpindi. Nobody in connection with her actual assassination. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is a great travesty of justice. Um, there was a very strong case that included a United Nations investigation report, Pakistan's own investigation, which included not only DNA uh, results, uh, a DNA test evidence that placed the suicide bomber with his alleged accomplices, uh, the terrorists themselves were self-confessing, accused people that showed no remorse. Um, it was a 15-year-old Boy yes, but who, the, but who was he, found, he, his he, remains he, he, he have blown up, but it was those higher up that well, absolutely. nobody the knows. The ones that we caught, though, the ones mm. that uh, the, the accomplices... There were five the, who are the, yes, who in were, detention, which, who were in detention in trials. They were, yeah. uh, they were acquitted. Uh, Mr. Musharraf, who was not there, instead of giving You're talking any... talking about President Musharraf, President Musharraf at the time. Who's also accused Musharraf. and charged in this crime. Um, again, but you know no legal proceedings, I have to say, against Pervez Musharraf have stalled, and of course, whenever That's these the allegations... This is, the same, yeah. this is the same case which ha where they let the terrorists off despite their being self-confessing accused, despite their being DNA evidence. It's the same case where they ignore Musharraf's plan. He's run away from the country. Instead of giving a decision against him, they said, when he comes back, we'll decide but what happens know, to him. But you know, whenever these allegations that he so was involved in Benazir Bhutto's death, he laughs off these allegations and says no involvement whatsoever on his part. He does concede, however, that there were rogue elements in the deep state, in the deep establishment, who may have been colluding with elements of the Pakistan Taliban to assassinate your mother. Just want to put that straight. No, that's what he, he, he yeah. claims. Uh, but the United Nations report states that her security was undermined. And Mr. Musharraf threatened my mother. That's also on record. Well, he denies that. He, he denies deny that he had that conversation but the, yes, but on the phone they're, with her. They're not only her. witnesses. Okay. Uh, it's also been presented in court uh, that he d threatened my mother. She is on record. She told me, and I know she didn't like right, me. But I would just say so on the record I know, that but, uh, that's fair enough. Right. When he's here, he can defend himself. Pervez the fact Mishara of the matter is no. that okay. he says no, as dictators and murderers often do. If it was the case, then why hasn't he come back to face right, the charges? He, why is he running away from the court cases? That, you say, and it's not only my mother's case where he's accused. Okay. He's also accused of bombing and killing. We the can't former try chief Pervez. minister of Balochistan. We can't, we can't. He's also committed charged okay. treason, but he's not appearing he's in any of these cases. He's exile in Dubai, but I just have to put it on the record, as I said, that yes, he, he denies, denies all he of that. He's denies. Not, he says, not a murderer, not a dictator. But, not okay. a dictator? Yeah, that's is that what, also I'm in just doubt? Saying, just saying. But okay, anyway, I let's mean, move on to the fact that... By, the, this the is a new alternative fact. Well, no, I'm just <laughs> putting out what he would say. But, you, you, so, but I want to ask you this, though, Bilal um, Brito Zardari. Your father became president soon after your mother's death in 2008. Um, because he was co-chair of the PPP. And if the investigation was to proceed smoothly, if there was to be no cover-up, he could have done something about that, because he was president. That's why. But as why, president why didn't he? But that's, I'm, he did. And as president of Pakistan, for the first time in our history, our country went all the way to the United Nations for an investigation. Sure. Now... The case that we have against the accused is very strong. Can I just tell you your what that UN, you mentioned the UN Commission, which your own, father asked. Own, no, yeah. no, not only the UN Commission, yeah. right? Because that's not the there's an investigation and a case against your own investigation in the BBC has said that it's a very strong case. It points to the fact that DNA evidence has been ignored. That's a very serious but accusation. On the UN, in the same case, yeah. after our government. Uh, was wound, uh, completed its term. The chief prosecutor was assassinated 
In this case, my mother had a very strong case against Mr. Musharraf. The judges, seven judges, changed hands in this case. A case that should have been decided according to the law within two weeks took ten years. Absolutely. And yeah. that, too, is a travesty of justice. But we haven't got... You haven't got justice haven't, yet for yes. your mother. I understand that. But the UN Commission President, Geraldo Munoz, says there were many people in the establishment that we wanted to interview, but they refused. But he also said some of the obstacles were not from the military, but from government ministers, too. And he said the UN he said team, he was unable to, the UN team's security he was and safe house was withdrawn. He was the unable. Was president absolutely. At the time. I don't want to get into how the. But these I don't government want to ministers get into were the, also PPP yeah, government the government ministers. ministers. Let me please explain. Absolutely. I'm not trying to deny that. They were, peop uh, they were ministers of the government, mm -hmm. and if they failed pr to produce people, that is our failing, that we failed to produce uh, the individuals that they wanted to produce. But the report also mentions the fact that they did not get uh, um, access to these certain individuals, did not undermine their ability to produce the report. All right. So it had no consequences sure. on the credibility of the report, on the accusations in the report, which directly accuse my mother's security are being sabotaged as a result of the police being sent away that were supposed to blockade. Oh, you've made that clear. We've dealt with uh, Pervez Musharraf and the allegations you put against him and what his response would be. But let's move on to the, the state of affairs with the Pakistan People's Party, the party founded by your grandfather. He was executed in 1979 by the uh, military rule there under martial law. So we have a history yeah, of military dictators assassinating, well, uh, so they well, can keep denying, that's but what uh, it's on the record. All right, but just looking at the political aspects of this, is it fair to say that the PPP is run like a personal fiefdom of the Bhutto family? It's an uh, accusation dynastic politics mm -hmm. is a reality in South Asia. All political parties in Pakistan rely on dynastic politics to a certain degree. I'm not going to debate the merits or demerits of that because any modern society will want to pr promote a meritocratic system. But in the, Pak the Pakistan People's Party is the only party that hasn't choose to pr didn't choose to pursue that path of dynastic politics by choice. My grandfather wasn't assassinated. If my mother wasn't assassinated, my grandfather would be the one doing politics. My mother would be in the foreign office and I'd still be a student. <laughs> Every other political party that relies on dynastic politics in Pakistan have not suffered assassination, but still brothers, sisters, etc. are running the All show. Right. So that's what you say on the I, dynastic I, I, argument. And I also but told you that three days after my mother's assassination, when we just buried the body, the Central Executive Committee of the party asked me. It's not something I could have refused. I was asked, I stood up and did what I have oh, to so do. And with time I will have to prove to myself. It. And my okay. party is the ones who get to You've decide who lead them. All the right. party gets to decide and they obviously felt they, that they, they trust you. me the most to continue my mother's mission. All right. An editorial on the German TV station Deutsche Welle's website in October 2016 said, many people in Pakistan say Bill Owell's future in Pakistani politics is bleak because Benazir Bhutto's PPP does not exist anymore. It died with her in 2007. Obviously, the assassination of my mother, Shahid Mothrama Benazir Bhutto, did not only leave a huge vacuum within the Pakistan People's Party, but also in the body, body politics of Pakistan. Uh, and not only her assassination, but the climate in our politics in the moment in Pakistan. It's filled with extremism, partisanship, and a hate-driven politics that I refuse to engage in. Perhaps in the but short term... what's going on in the PPP that it's referring to. Let me, let me suggest, tell you something else that this website said. It quotes Nahid Khan, who was one of Benazir Bhutto's closest aides, and she fell out with your father when he became president um, and became co-chair of the party. She She'd said, actually fallen out with my mother before right. she was assassinated. Okay. Well, let me tell you what she said. The present PPP leadership is only interested in power. They have abandoned the PPP ideology. You know, she's saying you've forgotten your roots of the slogan of food, shelter, clothing, you know, democracy, Islam and economic socialism was very much the mantra of the PPP and that it's lost its roots. I would disagree with her, obviously. Uh, she is an opponent. She runs against us in the elections, and she has her right to criticize. Uh, the Pakistan People's Party is very much committed to the same ideals. I know I'm committed. They're my mother's ideals, and I will fight for them. I will die for them, and I do. I show it on a daily basis. Well, she ignores issues that face the people of Pakistan, from extremism to poverty to f financial chaos. The Pakistan People's Party and myself continue to advocate for these uh, principles. We're not in government today. We are in opposition, but we're doing what we can from the opposition's perspective. Well, uh, I mean, your father 
is, is arguably still playing an important role in mm. the party. And the American Pakistani journalist Hassan Mujtaba says Bilalwood's political career has been scripted by his father and members of his team. Mm -hmm. He could revive his mother's party if he breaks free from his father's influence and takes charge of the PPP. Bilalwood, who is in control of the PPP, you or your father? See, in, in, in democratic parties, you work together and you make decisions through consensus. Myself and my father don't dictate decisions. We have a central executive committee of the party that makes party policy, that decides party policy, and we implement that policy. As far as my political career is concerned, I'm in no rush and I'm not worried. I'm 29 years old and I'm in this for the long haul. Pakistan So are you in control of the party or is your father in control of the party or do you work together? We work together. We, we absolutely work together. But Pakistan and the Pakistan People's Party faces a lot of challenges. These challenges aren't going to be uh, defeated in a single day. You right. have to be committed one of to your it for the long haul. One of your challenges is that your popularity is really plummeted as a party. Um, in the elections, um, the last elections in 2013, you won 47 seats and the um, ruling party, the PMLN, Pakistan Muslim League, Nawaz, has got 189 seats. Even in a by-election in Lahore, where your party was born recently, the party just had a fraction of votes. And part of the problem is that the PPP is being seen as mired in corruption. Um, the masses feel that. The opposition politician Imran Khan has called your father the biggest illness of Sindh province. And he talks about as if Ali Zardari's wealth has skyrocketed. And it's these kind of allegations swirling around so your I, party. Let me address the, quite the yeah. three different things you I brought up. First is the 2013 general elections. Let me allow myself to contextualize, contextualize uh, what happened in the 2013 general elections. The Taliban, the terrorists, had called out the Pakistan People's Party and said, we will not allow them to campaign. We will attack them. My candidates were kidnapped. My, the Prime Minister's son was kidnapped. The former governor's son was kidnapped. They also took other political parties' names. They took Imran Khan's PTI, Muslim League Nawaz, and jamaat -e islami In their case, they said these are our allies. They will have a free hand and they can run. On top of that, the Pakistan People's Party was the first government to complete a civilian term and mm -hmm. conduct a peaceful transfer of power. We went against a whole host of anti-democratic interests within Pakistan to reform and pass the 18th Amendment. We were not allowed to campaign. The political chief justice at the time, who has now gone on to form, on, form his own political party, stopped my father yeah. from campaigning. But even, so when, good or bad, even in the by-elections good, good, September I'm getting, I'm getting, a few I'm, I'm, months I'm, I'm ago, getting, you only got a handful I'm getting, of votes. I'm, excuse me, I'm that's getting, your stronghold. I, I'm getting, that's not my stronghold. I'm getting I mean, the whole, I'm, get, I'm the getting there, please, if you okay. please. So that was the 2013 elections. You weren't allowed to campaign. You show me how, whether it's any American president, any British uh, party, if their leadership is not allowed to campaign, they're under attack from terrorists, and everybody else is given a free hat, there are going to be consequences to that. polls still show uh, consistently British that polls. the PMLN, as as the, you know, National Gallup poll shows that your vote is as, not as, as high as the ruling as party. As far as the by-elections are concerned, you refer to an older by-election. Okay. The last by-election that took place on the border of South Punjab and Sindh was the Ghotki by-election. In that by-election, we won by a lead of 12,000 points. What about but the, at the end of the allegations? The I'm so glad you brought, me to, you brought me on to that, uh, because this political victimization has gone on throughout uh, my mother's and father's political life. There were umpteen cases brought against them. My father spent 11 and a half years in prison without a conviction. Each and every single case brought against my parents, it took us 30 years, we fought it out. Each and every single case, they have been acquitted. After that, that was when my father didn't enjoy power. It was after that that he became the most powerful civilian president in Pakistan's history. For those five-year term, Mr. Khan has made accusations and lies. Not a single case has been brought against my father. I'm sure Imran Khan Unla would say that he doesn't tell of lies. Of course he would, he yeah. would say that, Just but he does. That it's there. on the record. All right, putting that out there. So looking then now, here you are, chairman of the PPP. You've got these elections in July for the National Assembly. You want to do well yourself. Voters want you to address those basic development issues I talked about, food, shelter, clothing, education, health, and all the rest of it. Is that the key plank now of your 
pl campaign platform? I'm so glad you asked me that, because that's exactly what my slogan is for the next general election. It's Roti Kapra and Makan Ilm Sehat Sabko Makkal, which means food, clothing and shelter, education, health and jobs for all. The Pakistan People's Party is focused so on the So bread and butter issues, you're focused, focused on, on that. Bread and butter so you're issues. seen as, obviously, you're a young man, as seen as very progressive in your thinking on women's rights, on, you know, um, minorities' rights and so on. You've got some rather eye-catching policies as well on foreign policy, for instance. Um, you, you believe in military action against the Taliban in Pakistan. I mean, is that a good idea? Do you think when you see that neighbouring Afghanistan, Ashraf Ghani there, is saying, well, you know, we may need to negotiate with some elements of the Taliban, you're deliberately taking a very different attack uh, there my uh, absolutely I feel that actually Pakistan has been solely focusing on the military component uh, against extremism and it needs to be a broader approach we absolutely have to uh, you know, people who challenge our state, who take up arms against the state, we have to challenge them militarily. But we need a holistic overall approach that doesn't only focus on terrorism, but also focuses on countering extremism, mm -hmm. which would require, a, it would require education reform, curriculum reform, police reform, judicial reform, and providing economic opportunity, equal economic opportunity. And this is the overall comprehensive package that I believe the Pakistan People's Party can lead and provide, whereas the current government has been led by behind, they've only been reacting to events and haven't been leading on the issue of extremism and terrorism, which was the number one well, most fundamental threat to Pakistan's existence. Touching on Kashmir very quickly, you said, I'll take back Kashmir, all of it, and not leave behind a single inch of it, because like other provinces, it belongs to Pakistan. I was, hmm. uh, um, it wasn't, I want to clarify, I was talking in a political context, so winning elections, but mm -hmm. I'm going to speak about the Kashmir issue, nonetheless. It wasn't a Pakistani prime minister, it was the PM of India, who took the Kashmir issue to the United uh, Nations Security Council, which calls for a plebiscite. It's not the Pakistani constitution alone, it's the Indian constitution that says Kashmir is a special, uh, gives us a special designation as a result of its disputed territory. Unfortunately, India refuses to talk about You're Kashmir. You're going to be at loggerheads with India, though, I'm not, I'm on, not that, going to be on that path, My point is that we can't yep. ignore the United Nations. We can't continue to close our eyes to what's happening in Kashmir. It's the age of social media. We can't hide the, the young generation of Kashmiris are coming out in the streets protesting for their rights and they're being attacked with pellet guns and uh, human rights atrocities. The people of Kashmir are screaming that the butcher oh. of Gujarat has become the butcher of Kashmir and the world international community is turning a blind eye. Oh. We have to engage on issues. I want peace with India, but to, in order to accomplish that, we can't ignore the elephants in the room. So, we were talking about you entering politics. You said you felt you had to do what you're doing now. I mean, do you feel that it's a burden on you? I, I, look, there's no greater pride in a son's life to know, to feel that he is working towards accomplishing his mother's unfulfilled mission. Do that is what motivates me. That's what drives me. Of course, it's challenging. Pakistan is one of the most difficult countries on the planet to do politics. My entire family has been assassinated. Workers and leaders of my party You're get assassinated. You worried about your own safety? My, I'm put, I have a lot of security and I'm, I feel secure. But the fact of the matter is that I feel passionately that the, Pakistan, the people of Pakistan deserve equal opportunity. They deserve a progressive country where regardless of whether you're rich or poor, male or female, Muslim or non-Muslim, you have equal rights and equal opportunities. Do you and after having Prime Minister? My aim is to achieve my ideology and my goals. That is my motivation. It is not a desire or a simple desire to become Prime Minister of Pakistan. Bin Alwal Bhutto Zardari, thank you very much indeed for coming on Hard Talk. Thank you so much for thank having you. me, Zayn. It's thank such you. a pleasure. Thank you.